Do not believe the title of this video. It is only a lie and used as clickbait. Sky replacement is not dead. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to do something a little different, make it a little bit dramatic. Anyways, let's get into the video. Will Simpson here and welcome back to the channel. Now, before we get started, on first glance you might notice a little something different. What is it? No, it's not my hair. I did not get a well, I did get a haircut. No, but it's not that. It's the setup. Now, if you're new to the channel, if this is your first video you've seen, then you're probably like, well, that is the first time I'm seeing this video, so the setup isn't new. But it is new. I just rearranged everything. And that is because I am working on a special course right now, so I wanted to change up the setup for the course, and that will be coming soon, so stay tuned for that. But for this video, we are going to go over a little bit of sky replacement stuff. Now, this is a little bit of a thing that has been done over and over and over again, but not in comparison to generative fill. So taking sky replacement and generative fill and seeing how they work together. Now I did a couple of tests here and that's what we're gonna get into is those tests. But there's definitely two clear sides when it comes to sky replacement. The one side is, if the sky is no good, replace the sky. Still a photograph. The other side is, well, the sky was the sky. Like changing the sky changes the photo. And yes, where both arguments do have a little bit of merit, I tend to fall on the side of if the sky wasn't what you wanted, man, go ahead and replace it. Because I'm that guy that I'll go to a location and it's this epic, beautiful location and the sky is exactly not what you want. It's blue all blue, not a cloud in the sky, or it's completely gray. And while that's gray, great, gray, great, <laughs> and all, it's still, it's not like the dramatic sunset or the dramatic clouds that you want. So I say, you know what, go ahead, replace that sky. But on the other side, when I go to like to the grocery store to buy some eggs and some milk, the freaking sky is epic. It's like exploding with color, looking super dramatic and moody. And I'm at Publix, it's, it's just not fair. So you can't really control the weather. So if you need to replace the sky, then fine. If you're, if you have an idea in mind, go for it. Let's, let's just go for it. That's, that's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. If you agree, comment below. If you don't agree, let me know why. Anyways, let's get into Photoshop and get started. First things first, I am going to be using both Photoshop and Photoshop beta because Photoshop has the sky replacement ability where Photoshop beta doesn't. Photoshop beta has the generative fill ability where Photoshop doesn't. So we're gonna be bouncing for, back and forth for a little bit. First photo we're gonna be working on is this one right here. Now this is a fantastic image. This is not my image. It's one that I pulled from a free website, it's Pexels. It's a fantastic image. The, the shot is great, the location is great, the girl is great, all of it looks fantastic. But honestly, it doesn't have the mood. It doesn't have the style that I would expect on an image like this. As a single image, spectacular but I personally wanna create a little something something and add a little uh, va va voom to it, if you will. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the sky. So I've already done a couple of different sky replacements here, but we're gonna go ahead and go through the whole process. So we'll go to file, make sure you make a copy here. See, this is the main file that I made a copy, that way you always have a backup. Uh, go up here to file, go down to not file, go to edit. We're gonna go to edit, go to edit. <laughs> Now I am using a Mac, so if uh, you're using a PC, it might be slightly different. So go to sky replacement, and then you will see uh, probably a sky here that will automatically populate into the sky replacement. So this is automatic, like Adobe has a bunch of default skies and it'll automatically populate the sky that you want. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click this little arrow and you're gonna look at all the skies. Now, if you don't have skies, if you don't have a bunch of skies, Adobe will give you some, some default ones that you can use. But if you want some new, fantastic, dramatic, moody skies, all, all uh, you know, a ton of skies, I have a sky replacement course that actually comes with 101 skies. 101, that is a ton of skies. Plus, I mean, that alone is worth the price, but the, the plus it comes with a course on how to do it in Photoshop and in Luminar. And so if you're interested in this, want to get 101 skies with the courses and all that, it's only $23.99. I'll link it in the description, but it is incredible. And those are the skies that we'll be using in this replacement. So we're going to go down here to Moody Sky Presets. These are all skies that come with the pack. And we're going to go to Moody Sky 13, which I believe is right here. So we're going to click on this one and it is automatically going to populate into the sky. 
Now it looks good as is, but you'll notice that the foreground color is no good. So we're gonna click off of the sky and we're going to adjust the uh, adjustments here. Now this comes with a lot of just kind of playing and tweaking. And I'm not gonna go through all of these because I, just, I go through all of this in the course so you will be a master at sky replacement if you get the course. Uh, so we're just gonna go to foreground adjustments here and we're gonna adjust this foreground lighting here. We're gonna see what it looks. This is just adjusting the mountains you notice, lighter, darker. So we're gonna go darker. Then we're gonna go to the edge lighting and just kind of see what it looks like. Again, we're gonna go darker. And then the color adjustment, which is the whole foreground and definitely gonna go darker. So that looks really, really good. So now we're gonna press okay. Okay, now we're gonna make a few other tweaks. For example, I want to add a curves adjustment to the bottom layer here. So I'm gonna click the layer, I'm gonna press here, go to curves, and we're going to take the RGB, we're gonna lower it a little to darken it. Then we're gonna to go to the red and we're gonna raise it to add more red into the image. You see how it brings that sky together? It look really matches the two. Good, once we're done with that, we're then going to click on the layer again, press W on the keyboard and press select subject. This will give us an adjustment of the subject. We're gonna to go to edit, image, image, we're gonna to go to image. I can never remember the damn menus. There's so many, I can't, never, I, I find them eventually, but I can't remember exactly where they are at all times. So menu, adjustments, curves, and we're just going to adjust the brightness of the subject, make her a little brighter, press okay. Good, now, so we have gone from this before, and after, this is looking so freaking good here. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this image and because generative fill isn't in Photoshop, we're gonna go into Photoshop beta and I'm gonna show you what we can do with generative fill. So let's jump over to Photoshop beta. We're gonna open this image right here and then we're going to blend the, the sky with the mountain range. So I've already done it, but I'm gonna do it completely separate to you again. So we're gonna click on the layer Press the marquee tool, just kind of select this side, right, this section right here, and type in blend sky with mountains. And let's see what happens. Good, and there we have it. Now, I don't really like that, so let's go to the next one. That one's much better. Okay, let's move this, click this little line, you can move this. Now that looks much better, but one thing I noticed is you see this square line, it didn't do that the last time. Now I'm not sure if this is a bug or something or I might just be doing it wrong, but let me show you the other one that I did. If I turn on this layer, turn off that layer, turn on this layer, this looks so freaking good. Now the thing with generative fill, if you do it once, it doesn't duplicate itself. So if you can generative fill 75 times and it'll always be different. So if you like one version, keep it, save it. Don't, don't delete it, like make sure you save that one. But this one, that's why I saved this particular one because it looks so good. So here's the before and here's the after. I mean, that's an inc that to me is an incredible image. And yes, the sky is fake, but honestly, it's a work of art, baby. It's a work of art, I love it. Okay, good, now let's try generative fill as the sky replacement. Let's see if that works. So let's go ahead and turn off these skies here. Now again, I did this earlier, so I'm gonna show you the results that I came up with and then we'll just start from scratch. So here's what I did before. Here is my AI generative fill sky. Now that's pretty cool, but it, it needs a lot of blending. Like I would need to put some shadows, like maybe here or here, maybe darken the, the, the foreground up a little because it looks, it just doesn't match well. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna click here, we're gonna click on our layer, press the marquee tool, select our sky, and we're gonna type uh, moody, ah, let's do dramatic, let's do dramatic sky. Good, and see what happens. Now at this point while we wait, make sure to hit the subscribe button, that's a like button. Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to get your 101 skies. That is, a, that is amazing, like honestly, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyways, okay, good. All right, so with this one, it added the mountains, added the blue sky. I don't like that. Let's try another one. I don't like that. That one's probably the best of the three. It looks the most realistic. Let's try, a, let's try moody sky. Let's try that moody sky. See what happens, see what happens. All right, that's not terrible. Again, I don't really like it. So, oh, that's not bad. So that I could work with. That one isn't terrible. So you see, sky replacement isn't dead yet, but 
might be on the way. <laughs> Anyways, let's go to the next image. You can kind of see how you can use generative fill for a sky replacement, but it actually works a little bit better to sky replace it yourself and then use generative fill to kind of tweak and add and adjust the different layers and stuff to make it really blend together. All right, so let's go to the next one. We're gonna go back to original Photoshop. We're going to open up our other image. Now there's a cool thing in generative fill just updated. So if you didn't update generative fill, update it. But I'll show you that when we get into generative fill. Anyways, let's replace this sky. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our layer, go to edit, I remember this time, down to sky replacement. Good, let's click the layer. You have to click the layer, go to edit. I can do this, I, I, I swear I can. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, layer, sky replacement, and again, it's going to drop in the last sky that we used, but for this one, we're gonna do something different. That actually looks pretty cool. Anyways, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our skies. We're still gonna use Moody presets, but we're gonna use Moody one. I'm gonna click this because this has a great silhouette. Oh, you see what I'm talking about? That looks freaking awesome. Click away, and then we're gonna make our adjustments. Again, we're gonna make them all darker. Color adjustments, yeah. Oh man, that looks so good. Press OK, and then we are going to just say done. Honestly, that looks so freaking much better. Look at this, before, after. Are you kidding me? So much more dramatic, oh, it's beautiful. All right, good, now let's go back into Photoshop beta. Close this bad boy, don't save, we don't care, and we are gonna open this one. That's not the one we're gonna open. Good, here we go, we found it. So now, watch this. This is the coolest freaking thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press Shift, Command, Option, E. That's gonna make a combined layer of all of the previous layers. We're gonna zoom out, we're gonna press C on the keyboard for the crop tool, and we're gonna expand this uh, area. We're actually gonna make it a four by five Instagram special. And we're gonna expand it to about there, press OK. We're gonna click generative fill and we're gonna say generate. We're not gonna put any freaking prompts in this. Wait for it. This is stupid, I tell you. Just stupid. Oh my God. Look, are you kidding me guys? Look at this. This is insane. Not only did it expand the photo, making it more dramatic, giving it more information around it, but it did it almost seamlessly. Like there's a little bit of stuff here, like if you look here, there's a line, but I mean, honestly, you could fix that so freaking easily, it's ridiculous. But let's check out the other examples. Here's the second one, looks so good. Here's the third, honestly, mm, looks, Okay, looks a little off scale, like this mountain looks really big and this, this seems a little out of scale, but that's okay. We could generate again and 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 again. You get it. But either way, this is amazing. So by adding sky replacement, generative fill, and mixing these in your images, you guys can create some incredible pieces of art, incredible photos that I would love to see. So if you do post, if you do use this technique, if you, especially if you get my skies and you use them and post them, tag me on Instagram. I would love to share them or threads. I don't know, are you on threads? Who's on threads? Like I have like 500 some followers on threads, but I don't think anybody's actually on threads. Side note, anyways, moving on, but that's it. So hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget, Click the link in the below. Click, click the link in the in the below of the thing, and go get your 101 skies and courses, and get started on making some awesome, awesome photos. But for that, is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. This is what YouTube recommends you go watch next. This is what I recommend you go watch next, and this is how you can subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.